Good evening, shareholders of OUE Depot Healthcare. Thank you for joining us uh, today at the SIS OUE Depot Healthcare virtual information session. As you may know, OUE Depot Healthcare will be holding their EGM on 28th of January, and the agenda is to seek approval from you shareholders on the divestment of 12 nursing homes located in Japan. The purchase consideration stands at 163.5 million, of which 131.5 million will be paid in the form of new 431.1 million first read units. You shareholders will therefore be eager to know how will this divestment impact OUE Depot Healthcare and your investments. And will the risk profile of OUE LIPO healthcare change after this transaction? To help you make an informed decision on how you should vo vote at the EGM, tonight we have invited two distinguished senior management of OUE LIPO healthcare to join us at this dialogue. On my left, Immediate left is Mr. Lee Ishan, non-independent and non-executive chairman. And on my extreme left, Mr. Yet Kam Meng, chief executive officer and executive director. They will share with you more insights on this transaction, as well as to provide you with more information. Mr. Lee and Mr. Yet will also address your questions. So. Please submit your questions via the pigeonhole link provided to you on the screen. Now, without further ado then, I will now invite Mr. Yet to take us through the presentation to explain the transactions. Over to you, Mr. Yet. Thank you, David. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to attend our virtual information session in relation to the proposed divestment of our 12 Japan nursing homes. I'll be taking you through a short presentation that gives an overview of the transaction as well as our rationale for this proposed divestment. We first announced our intention to divest 100% of our interest in the 12 Japan nursing homes to first read for a consideration of 163.5 million on 8th December 2021 of which 131.5 million, or about 80%, will be payable in new first rate units. The remaining consideration will be paid in cash, as well as intercompany balances that will be assumed by first rate upon completion of the transaction. So why are we proposing to divest the 12 nursing homes to first rate? Firstly, the proposed transaction will enhance the capital structure of the company to create new capacities for growth. With the majority of the consideration in first rate units, our unit holding in first rate will increase from currently about 15% to more than 33%, and that is our direct holdings. The increase in ownership of first rate will give us greater and more flexible liquidity to propel our growth forward. Furthermore, these additional first rate units that we will receive will generate similar income and cash flow, similar to our 12 nursing homes, giving us minimal impact on our recurring income and cash flow. Secondly, the proposed transaction is also aligned with our asset light strategy. If you have been our shareholder for some time or you have been following our developments, you will be aware that we are committed to grow our business guided by our three-pronged strategy, which is strategic partnerships, asset light operations, and pan-Asia expansion. With this proposed transaction, we will successfully transfer the healthcare real estate part to First Street, 
while OUE LH can focus on delivering the healthcare services. With this, it enhances our capital structure and gives us greater liquidity flexibility that puts the company in a stronger position to embark on future growth initiatives to create shareholder value. Last but not least, the proposed transaction will also help to reposition First Street with diversification of its asset portfolio. With the 12 Japan nursing homes injected into the REIT, First Street's geographical and tenant risk will be diversified as shown in the slide. The strategic entry into Japan nursing home market will also enable First Street to diversify the risk profile of its enlarged portfolio. This is also a testament of our commitment as sponsor of First Street in their growth path because the interests of both companies are fully aligned given that we are their sponsor as well as the largest unit holder. I have reached the end of my short presentation. All in, this transaction is a step forward, improving our capital structure and providing us with new capacities for growth, which is in line with our long-term asset light strategy so that we can focus on providing quality healthcare service delivery. As a sponsor of First Street, we have the view that this is a win-win transaction for both the REIT and ourselves, and it demonstrates the commitment to drive value for both unit holders and shareholders respectively of the both entities. Uh, with that, I'll hand it back to David. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Yet. Now the questions that uh, will be helpful to the shareholders uh, with the answers. and. Uh, I must say that some of the questions are pretty tough ones. So be ready to start off the dialogue session. Uh, would the company uh, update shareholders on the development performance of the other businesses in China and Myanmar? Uh, given that the Japan nursing homes have been the core contributor of revenue and profit for the group. All right. So uh, in Financial year 2020, uh, Japan contributed approximately 87% and 59% of the group's uh, total revenue and non-current assets respectively. So the thinking uh, would be the mo major projects in China are still at the development stage while the group's operation in Myanmar is faced with the rapidly evolving COVID-19 pandemic and the tense political situation. So would the company update the shareholders, your shareholders, on the development performance of other businesses uh, in China and Myanmar, given that the Japan nursing homes have been uh, the core contributor, right, uh, of revenue. And, and sure. I think this is the thing, you are giving, uh, so to speak, a fat cow. You are hoping the cow will get fatter and give you better milk. All right, is that the case? So uh, I think they are, they are thinking how will, you know, basically, uh, how will it play out? You are, you are putting all your hopes on the fat cow. Right. Over okay. to you. Thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Lee. Yeah. Thanks, David, and hello, everyone. Uh, um, and I'm quite happy to take this first question uh, together with my board members who are also uh, online. Um, I don't know whether you can see them. I can't see them, but I know they are there. Uh, I think David put it uh, very uh, aptly uh, that um, we are growing uh, our new businesses on one hand and we have a steady operation in the Japan nursing home on the other. So on China, uh, I think previously we have updated our shareholders that we are building two hospitals, two new hospitals uh, in the Changshu, uh, Jiangsu, uh, as well as in the uh, Taizu Wan, which is the Prince uh, Bay in Shenzhen. Uh, so these two hospitals, are, uh, the first one in Changshu has finished the bare structure construction, if you like. Uh, so the next stage is for the team uh, to furnish up 
you know, the interior, uh, you know, in terms of uh, renovation and also uh, equipment. Uh, so this hospital is expected to be uh, operational uh, next year, 2023. The other one, uh, uh, in the Prince Bay in Shenzhen uh, is also under construction and uh, this will be operational in 2024. All right, so, uh, so in short, our Chinese projects are uh, progressing as per plan, which is a good thing. On the Myanmar side, um, we all know that uh, in 2021, uh, first half of the year, uh, the country went through a very difficult uh, political situation and uh, so uh, did our hospitals uh, because for a period of time, uh, you know, nobody really knew what was going to happen and things really uh, got frozen up. So, uh, but I'm quite happy to say that uh, in the second half of the year, uh, operations have returned to normalcy and um, and yeah, in fact, our uh, Punlang hospitals in Yangon uh, was the first private hospital group to uh, be allowed or permitted to test, treat, and uh, to care for COVID-19 patients. Mm. Uh, and they were also the first uh, private hospital group uh, to receive permission uh, by the authority to import 200,000 doses of uh, Sinopharm vaccine. Mm. Uh, and this is significant in a country where vaccines are not uh, readily available. And then uh, the third uh, is also that uh, the Pulang Hospital uh, was re-accredited re uh, JCI standard. And we know that JCI is a standard for uh, hospital reaching uh, international uh, best practices. So I think uh, in short, both our uh, China and uh, uh, Myanmar. Myanmar operations are, are on track and improving. Mm. Uh, uh, and as you said, uh, no doubt, uh, building new hospitals takes time, uh, both in construction, in equipping, in uh, you know, uh, recruiting the medical staff, and uh, you know, uh, and then come to the steady state of operation. Mm. It takes time. So the Myanmar commitment is not very substantial. Uh, compared to Chinese, uh, yeah, Chinese. Uh, yeah. In terms of depend on how you compare, yeah, yeah, exactly. So the the uh, but they are, I think the two markets are attractive uh, in two ways. Of course, the Chinese hospital, uh, you know, they cater. Uh, one is a women's and child hospital. The other one is a uh, international hospital. So they cater to different uh, markets and different needs of the uh, society. The Myanmar hospital. Uh, the four hospitals that we have uh, represent uh, a, a developing country, and uh, but uh, relatively large population, and uh, there's a segment of which will require uh, good healthcare, and the healthcare industry there is still, uh, I would say, very nascent. So I think uh, both uh, offer a different kind of uh, you know future uh, for us. Right. Okay, so the group next question will be on risk profile. Uh, currently, the group receives about 100% of the cash flow from the 12 Japan nursing homes. With the proposed sale, management has stated that there is minimal impact to income and cash flow, as the additional first read units are expected to generate similar income and cash flow as compared to the Japan nursing homes. Uh, will the group's risk profile be significantly altered with the proposed disposal? Right, that's A. Right. Uh, B would be uh, shareholders asked to trade uh, its 100% exposure to freehold stable low risk assets in Japan for a greater share of first REITs Indonesian portfolio. Then uh, that recently had to restructure his master lease. If so, can management elaborate further why this is in the interest of the company and its shareholders? How are shareholders compensated for this trade? If I may stop here, yes. just A and B, then we'll go on to the next. Sure. Yeah. yeah, thanks, David. Uh, maybe I'll just address both. Both together. There are some similarities in yes. the response. Yeah. Uh, 
so I think in terms of the risk exposure, even before this transaction, like what I presented earlier, uh, OUE Lipo Healthcare is already the sponsor and the biggest shareholder, so to speak, uh, in the REIT. Uh, currently, we hold about more than 15% directly in the REIT. And through our shareholding in the REIT manager, we own another 3-4%. Yeah. So we are close to 20% in the REIT now. So this is not a new investment, so to speak, in the REIT. So we do not actually see a change in the risk profile. Mm. And as I've mentioned earlier, it's actually aligned with our three-pronged strategy of financial growth, partnership, and asset life. Mm. And that is the whole purpose why about three years ago, we got into first read. It's supposed to serve as our capital recycling platform. So it serves its purpose and it doesn't change our whole business, so to speak. So that OU Lipo Healthcare itself can focus on the service part of mm. things. Uh, and if you look in the more macro perspective of things, uh, as you rightly pointed out, most of our fixed assets now is in Japan, nursing homes. Yeah? But now putting into the read, we actually, from our perspective, our asset risk, our geographical risk gets diversified. So it's not a bad thing after all. And I think that's the beauty of uh, how we have structured it. I also want to take your question about we giving the fat cow yeah. away. Yeah. I see it as uh, we use the fat cow to grow another few calves into oh. fat cows. Okay. Uh, because the 12 nursing home never leave our group, so to speak. Uh, we, we are the sponsor of First Street. Right. We are just putting it into different vehicles. Mm. So with our Japanese nursing home in the read, uh, probably shareholders also ask the question, why are you taking the units and not yep. cash? Right. Right. And that precisely addresses the question of what happens to your interim, your income and cash flow. It is precisely the way we structure it, uh, the pricing of the new units being issued, the number of units that we are getting will make us almost income and cash flow neutral as a result of the transaction. Had we taken cash, more cash in this transaction, then I think as a company, immediately we'll be hit with certain loss of income and cash flow because cash is non-productive. Mm. So, so you, you prefer to take the units. units so that you will have a better positive expectation of better earnings right. Right. from the fat cow. Yes. Yes, I continue to earn the fat cow. Mm. And then with all these uh, 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 changes, uh, it's also good for first read. Yeah? Whilst I'm, I should not speak for first read, but I think it's already in the public information how first read has gone through certain difficult times at the beginning of last year. Uh, but they have moved a few steps ahead now. Uh, so the fact that we are putting the asset into first read, it also helps to diversify their risk profile, right? both geographically and tenant mix. Right? In the past, there are many Indonesia, many Siloam and Lipo Karawachi. Mm -hmm. right? Now that we have, in our 12 nursing homes, we have three more operators. Ah. Right? And the Japan nursing home by asset value, by income, is more than 20% of the enlarged portfolio. So hopefully, uh, we see uh, a future that this will give to certain re-rating of mm -hmm. first read yes. in the capital market as so well. So this is in keeping with the asset light policy. Yes. Any more Fed cows for transfer? Uh, as uh, our chairman has just said, right, we are still doing uh, new hospitals. Uh, we still have two hospitals that are being built in China. Uh, of course, these are two dis different business models. Yes. Uh, one is on leasing model. The yes. other one is actually we develop and own. So potentially, there's still a possibility. Yes. Yeah. And I think more importantly, uh, David, is that uh, as we embark on future growth, uh, you never know your target are they selling the business or business with assets? So you see, now we have the advantage of going into one transaction together with first read, so to speak, for example. Yes. Whereby, we focus on the business, the service part. Mm. They can do, subject to their asset return requirements, they do the assets. So it makes a very good combination, combination. between us to grow together. Yes. I mean, bottom line is, I'm, if I am a OUE HL shareholder, will my value of my share be enhanced? And you're saying quite positively, yes. 
it must be so you're not going to do anything and it other is far than i believe <laughs> <laughs> i mean the board will not consider it if yeah. it's not going to yeah. be otherwise yeah. you know yeah. but yeah. it is noted that the next question would be it is noted that first read units are deemed to be more liquid yeah. uh, can management please elaborate on the value of the said liquidity that is is a group looking to tap on the liquidity by passing its stake bearing in mind the sizable stake as well as the ostensible strategic value of first read to the group yes also explain the strategy and value of going asset life right. how much of the group's resources are expected to be freed up by going right. asset life right uh, as far as i can say now is that uh, first read will be an integral part of the group yeah so there is no immediate plans to so so called divest or pare down our stake uh, but having said that if you look at between the fixed asset in terms of the nursing home and the units which is actually traded and listed on mm. the stock exchange definitely the liquidity is different uh, there are different ways in the capital market that you could raise money not necessarily about selling yes. the, the reits right yes. there are various securitization yes. options for right. us yeah so this is what we meant by that uh, and also more importantly as as we uh, get the nursing home transferred to the read uh, currently the nursing home not only sits on our balance sheet as an asset but we do have underlying property loan for mm. the asset right mm. so it does have certain gearing implication on the company now yes so moving forward asset and debts will be transferred to first read so again there's certain improvement to our balance sheet So these are the various various things that will improve our capital structure, and that's what we meant by it gives us more uh, funding or, or resource flexibility. This is a dead headroom, if I may add. Yeah. To allow us sure. to borrow yes. if necessary, you know, for potential acquisition targets. Ah, yeah, okay. Right. That's right. Yeah. So the impression I'm getting is you have complete faith in first rates, ability to manage and enhance value. Right. that seems to be the the core of your yes yeah, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> this is uh, we come to valuation now sure this is a major transaction uh, and it is under the catalyst rules major transaction so shareholders will be really asking also themselves what is the you know transaction the the sale process and did the board carry out an auction mm -hmm. to obtain not that in mass but you know uh, what sort of uh, sale process uh, obtain the best price for the nursing homes right. if not please explain the process adapted some shareholders may consider the japanese nursing homes not some i think most of them consider is a gem uh, basically gem of the group especially with the structural tailwinds of the aged segment in japan yes so perhaps you might want to you know give yeah. you yeah i think this this transaction also has to be seen Uh, in the context of who is the buyer and seller right uh, we are not dealing with a third party it's actually as i said earlier is within the group yes which means that there is no conflict of interest Go between right. first read and ourselves and as the sponsor of the read of a subject to market valuation everything being equal we believe the priority of the asset should go to first read Right. not to the detriment of our shareholders of course right. yeah everything being equal so i think that's how we have uh, envisage this deal uh the price that we are transacting in is, is actually market valuation done by colleagues right which one of the international valuers uh and the beauty of this is that uh we already have received irrevocable uh, undertaking to support this transaction at the egm from both our controlling shareholders right so we can see the merits seems to be uh, agreed on by most people okay right? because both shareholders come from different perspective and, and they do see the merits of this deal uh, so we really believe that uh, in the process uh, it's a fair deal for both sides uh, because of the relationship between the two companies is definitely a win win uh, what is good for first street definitely must be good for our shareholders yes and we make sure this is transferred at market valuation done by colleagues yeah and from first read perspective uh, they would have decided this or they would have recommended this 
with IFA mm. opinion and the recommendation of their independent directors so as well. Let's repeat, what is good for first read shareholders yes. must necessarily be good for OUE and so. shareholders. I believe so. Yes. Because we are... Yeah, yeah. shareholders. Because post, <laughs> <laughs> we own <laughs> yeah, substantial <laughs> part of <laughs> yeah, we, first yes, yes. Uh, After this transaction... And also, I think, I, I, I may just jump in, uh, it has yeah. to be fair on both sides yeah. because uh, they have their board, we have their board. Yes. And we want to safeguard our unit holders' interest and yeah. they will safeguard their, their unit holders' unit. interest. Correct. And the only way for both to meet halfway is through a fair value transaction. Right. Yeah. Okay. If it is too, you know, fav Favorable to us, then there's no deal to them. It's interested party transaction? Uh, this is not the interested not a, party yeah. transaction, like we said, because the, the interest between the company and, and, and First Street is aligned. Uh, there's no separate interest of our controlling shareholders ah. as the counterparty. Yes. Right? There's the same strain of counterparty. Yeah, okay. yeah. and, and if I may just add on also, yeah. I think, uh, David, you say that some shareholders may consider Japanese nursing homes as our. The gem of the group, right? Correct. Therefore, we keep it in the group. Yeah, still within yeah, the, the group. <laughs> You're not disposed. We are not disposed to no. some external party. So that that impression must be addressed at all time in the mind. Yes. Of the, you're not disposing the no gems. Yeah, we are not yeah. keeping the gems. Yes. I'm going to milk the gems. Milk the gems and grow the yes. gems and grow yeah. more calves. More calves. <laughs> yeah. So finally, for me, is the timing of the disposal. Right. Uh, as noted about the Japan nursing homes accounted for 127 percent of the group's net profit. Is it the appropriate time to divest the 12 Japan nursing homes which have provided the group with stability in earnings and cash flow? Would it be correct to assume that OUE LH bottom line will be adversely affected at the next financial year results? That's uh, a worry? Yeah, I think this is a, a very pertinent question that we ask ourselves as well, the timing. Yeah? Yeah. I think the intention has always been there as a sponsor yes. uh, and aligned to our strategy or asset like, yes. we should do this. Yeah? Yes. So I think the timing has to be considered between both First Street and ourselves. Mm. Uh, as you also know, you also moderated the, the last time for First Street as well. Yes. So they went through very challenging times yes. uh, last year. So there were certain priorities of First Street to handle first, right? So they did three things last year. Restructuring of the master leases, uh, refinancing of their loans, and then strengthen their balance sheet with a recapitalization of a rights issue, right? So now they actually have moved to a position whereby they can think about growth and acquisition. So the timing. Similarly for us, uh, from day one since OUE took control of this company in 2017, uh, improving the capital structure and the balance sheet has always been the first thing that we have to address first. So it started with OUE putting in loans to repay some very high interest loans that was on the balance sheet then and certain MTN that were due for payment. We improved that further by bringing Itochu as our second biggest shareholder and with a 25% stake then. Mm. And that follows is a uh, rights issue that we did to further strengthen the balance sheet of this company. Mm. And from our priorities, the last thing we did was, again last year, we converted the very first tranche of shareholders' loan that was injected earlier mm. into a convertible preference shares. Yes. So all these are the priorities that we did before now we can embark on this disposal or this divestment of our 12 nursing home. Yes. So we believe the timing is right now between ourselves and First Street that we can undertake. So this you thing. have complete confidence in First Street management to manage the Japanese. Uh, I mean, you're going to use Japanese managers and yeah. Japanese yeah, at, it, the, at the local level. At the local level right. to manage, uh, so it's not going to be a transition in terms of uh, management. Uh, there's going to be continuity. Yes. Uh, so local management, management will be continue to be the same okay. thing. Yeah. So, would you consider, as a major shareholder of First Street, to embark on a because Singapore is has it's all in the same position as Japan, aging population. <coughs> Don't you think there is a gem waiting here? Yeah, I, I think again, whilst I should not speak for first read, yeah? Yeah. Uh, from LH perspective. Yeah. Would you propose and would you nudge them to do it? We will nudge them together when we see a good opportunity where we can provide the operations and service. Right. And they get the asset at the right valuation and mm. return for yeah, them. I know land orders. price here is terrible. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> whether you could even approach the government to provide, right, 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 yeah, right, you yeah. know, 
Uh, yeah, we, we, I, I think with the right target, uh, we, yeah, we have been looking. Why not? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, but uh, yeah, so far, yeah, uh, usually people asking for, for high price. Uh, yeah, I'm 78 <laughs> and I may be looking for a nursing home. You know, I don't know when, God willing. But it is something in the minds of many ageing Singaporeans. Yes, yes. We do not have that class, uh, the kind of class uh, treatment of aged people other than the right. good health care we have here. Yes. Uh, parents uh, have to be looked after. Children are working. You need to have good aged homes. Yes. All right. That yeah, is going right. to be a very good business for you know. Okay. So moving from there, let me take questions from uh, the audience. If uh, those who are attending, if you have questions, please uh, send it through now. Are there pigeonhole questions coming through? Provide the pipeline or timeline that OEE Depot will be working on after selling the Japanese asset. When will OEE Depot buy new accretive assets? Will there be div dividend for shareholders? <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, try to, uh, I think the first question, uh, time pipeline, and I think we, I talked a little yes. bit about our uh, Chinese uh, hospitals, two, two hospitals under construction. Yeah. And they will easily take us the next uh, three to five years, mm. uh, you know, to commence a steady uh, operation. Uh, because it's a hospital, it's not a shopping mall. Uh, so there's a lot of work uh, to be done before that. Uh, and we hope our uh, hospitals in Myanmar uh, continue to, uh, you know, stabilize. And over time, they are allowed uh, to do more, all right? Uh, because after all, uh, uh, if you if you have a chance to visit La Pune Hospital, uh, I think you must agree that it's, uh, it's one of the best hospitals uh, in Yangon. Now, uh, would there be dividend for shareholders? Uh, we uh, look at this, uh, uh, you know, every year. Um, I think in the meantime, we concluded that it is the best in the best interest of the company to, uh, you know, recycle our profit uh, into growing uh, our pipeline, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, uh, paying dividend uh, is not uh, to be considered as yet. Mm. Um, so I think our our priority is quite clear. Uh, if I borrow your analogy, we are we are milking the cow and, and growing calves. So uh, all this, we need tender loving care. Yes, yes, you do. Okay, the next question, please. Provide the uh, next one. Uh, is there another one? What are the future plans after divesting the Japanese Japan home assets? What are the figures after selling the Japan assets? You can provide figures tonight? That, you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, have uh, you worked uh, out the figures? That's right, yeah. And yeah. Bottom line, yeah. So uh, as we said, I mean, in terms of future plans, uh, our focus will be growing the service part of the business. I mean, I can assure shareholders that uh, management and board, we are working hard every every day actually looking at opportunities. But you just got to be accretive, accretive right? Yeah. Right? And, and create shareholder value. Yeah. Uh, but we are always on the lookout and always evaluating opportunities. And, and the right time, uh, where the deals are more concrete, we'll definitely make the disclosure at the right time. Uh, the figures in terms of after selling the Japan assets, I'm not so sure if I understand the question, uh, but we have provided the numbers in terms of the, uh, the value of the transaction. Uh, but I think more importantly to stress here is that uh, because of the way that it has been structured, because the fact that we are getting the majority in units, uh, then on a recurring basis, we do not expect uh, a change in terms of our cash flow and net income. Yeah. Uh, but but you're expecting state, a better bottom line. Uh, will be similar. similar. Okay, the, a better bottom line to the extent, uh, maybe I forgot to add this point. Uh, you know, our nursing home currently under the master leases, uh, the rental is good, recurring, but it's stable. There is almost no uh, mechanism for uh, upward revision of the rental. Yeah? Uh, but when we put into the bigger portfolio of the uh, first street uh, assets, yeah. and probably you also may recall, as part of the restructuring of their hospital assets last year, uh, it did provide for the Indonesia hospital assets uh, with rental escalation of about 4.5% every year from the base year. Yeah? And then there's also uh, opportunity of taking the higher of this rental 
or 8% of their gross revenue going forward. So the fact that we are given more units now in the first street, uh, where that happens, we also participate in the upside yes. of the rental income as opposed yes. to our current Japan nursing home income, which is stable and good, but stable. What can derail your expectations? Uh, I think in terms of, um, if you look at first street, uh, my own f uh, perspective is that uh, things are good, very good uh, since the beginning of last year. Uh, I think the whole rationale of the restructuring of the master leases is to ensure the sustainability of, th of the REIT uh, and of the rental income. And that has been actually packed quite scientifically uh, to the certain percentage of EBITDA of the hospital to ensure they can afford to yeah. pay the rental. Right. So we are quite positive and they have done a good job in terms of refinancing their loans. Uh, they, they brought in more capital from a rights issue. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think. And then if you look at the market, right? Uh, if I recall rightly, the rights exercise price is 20 cents. Uh, post rights for qu quite a while, the share price stabilized at around 26 cents there about. And now we are about 30 cents. So I okay. think the market seems to be given some recognition to the yes. improvement of first rate. So we really think that uh, it's good that now we move forward another transaction that will diversify its risk further and hopefully the market can recognize that and gives it a re-rating. Mm. Well, well, I think maybe David, yeah. you're, you're also asking the risk, uh, yeah. uh, I would say foreign uh, exchange, uh, yeah, yes. uh, no gain right. or loss is a risk to yeah. us because this is in uh, Japanese, Rupiah, is yeah. in the yeah. Myanmar currency yeah. and it's Chinese Japanese. yuan, yeah. right? Yeah. So they all can fluctuate in different directions. So I mean, that can, you can't run away for international yeah. business. Yeah. But there could be hedging yeah. and yep. uh, ways to manage that. Right. I can't ask this uh, question in terms of dollars and cents because it's not allowed. But surely in terms of percentage, there must be in your mind a figure 5%, 10% enhancement in value, 20%. Uh, for, because this is something that they will be thinking, you know, okay, we vote for you, but you must be optimistic that first rate will be doing well. Now right. it's bigger, bigger cow, right? So right. fatter cow. So definitely you must be having an expectation, optimistic expectation. Well, I, I think as, as we said earlier, uh, because there's this certain rental escalation uh, in the restructured list. So unless something catastrophic happened again, otherwise, this improvement, you will come. Uh, for the hospital assets, uh, the, the, the escalation is about 4.5%. But if you look at the total portfolio basis, if I'm not wrong, it's about 3 over percent on average because there are yeah. non-hospital assets in the portfolio as well. So you can expect actually from uh, the distribution and income from First Street, they should be growing at a low single digit. Mm -hmm. Of course, as Ishan has pointed out, it's subject to certain currency risk, I must yeah. say. Yeah. Right. But you will be on the board of First Street? Uh, no, uh, the board of First Street, we have nominees on the nominees board, but both, the both of us are not on the not board. Not there, but yeah. you will be represented? Yes, yes, yes. And you will be in an influential position to suggest that they should enhance this, you know, retirement yes. homes. Yes. Uh, you know, which, which will be an expectation of the shareholders of OUE. Right. Yeah, you know. I'm sure First Street will also share more at their yeah. virtual session tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah. now, now they are doing the First Street 2.0. I'm sure yes. they will share 2. that with you tomorrow. Yes. Okay, any more questions? Why exchange something so stable for more volatile First Street, more volatile First Street units? Isn't there more value in land property than REIT units which are susceptible to performance and corporate actions? Samantha Fu. Is that, is that yeah. accurate? Is that correct? I, I think we, we more or less also have addressed that issue. Uh, in terms of the stability, uh, what fundamentally is within a REIT is also assets. Yes. Uh, they also derive their income from rental. So it's actually not so different from what we are holding now. We own the assets and we get the rental. You're not selling it. You're not yeah, it's yeah. still within the group. Yeah. And, and, and we just park just it a into a bigger portfolio. Better division of labor. That's right. That's right. Do what More specialized division. They do what they do best and then we have... Uh, so so yeah. 
I think shareholders need to understand this is not a sale. Yes. It is still within the group and you are still holding your majority share holding is there. Yes. You are going to benefit. That is uh, philosophy here. That is the, the, the rationale for this action. Okay, next question. Uh, did management evaluate other options for the Japan nursing homes such as what could be the other options? Complete sale of, uh, uh, yeah. you know, that is the other, only other option yeah, whether okay. you could have sold. Oh, complete sale, but as you say, if we do it now, we are still keeping within the family. Family, yes. 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 If you, and you send away the jam, then uh, yeah. well, there is no more jam. No more jam, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it is a growing jam, isn't it? Uh, in terms of his income, is actually not really growing yeah. because the master lease stable. provision is a stable. Stable. Yeah. Uh, we are getting very stable. The tenants have been very good at paying rental, but there's almost no upside revision mm. based on the current structure of the lease. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Did man? Okay. Any other questions from uh, shareholders? Yes, I agree that there is an alignment of interest, but isn't this putting all the eggs in one basket? First, <coughs> we, can management please explain? We tell people, yeah. investors, not to put all the eggs in one basket. Mm. Yeah, I think again we have to go back to the, the basic uh, strategy of OELLH. Yeah? Uh, our focus has always, or we should focus on creating value uh, through provision of healthcare services. Uh, if we look at the market, uh, in terms of valuation of the business, normally a business asset like focus on uh, services, the valuation multiples are much better than a fixed asset company. Right? So I think that's where our premise is. And as we want to go regionally, if we don't move into an asset like model, it could be a very expensive exercise to do healthcare businesses across the region, holding both the assets as well as the business. So it's not something so tenable based on our, our very ambitious target to be a leading healthcare operator in the region. Yeah. So again, the asset never leaves us, but it's part of a bigger group, but in a separate listed REIT in First Street. So then, as what Yishan has said earlier, we just focus on what we are best at each. Mm. Right? First Street, they are good at managing asset management, they do their part. We think we are better in operations and providing services, we do the, our part. So actually, I feel for our shareholders, you actually get the best of both worlds. And also, I think in today's read business, actually, we, we shouldn't be talking so much about <laughs> the LH. Uh. Yeah. I hope we are not crossing the line, Isha. <laughs> but since I'm chair of the other read, yes. <laughs> I think size matters. Yes, size matters. Size so your absolutely. shareholding you, you also scale. matters, right? Yeah. 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 You now have 15%. Yes. Any idea, any ambition to increase that? Post this transaction, will yes. be about 33. 33, yeah. But on a direct holding. Mm. Yeah. The, currently, there's about 9% that is held by the manager. Ah, okay. So actually, it's a very significant stick right. combined. Okay, yeah. okay. But what, what I meant was, uh, yes. the, as a read themselves, the asset under management matters. Mm. So it, today, uh, if you want to be a first class read, you have to be pretty sizable. Yes. So I think uh, for, for any read, right, they have to f have plans to keep you know, growing their assets under management. Mm. You know, to, to, to be rated, uh, to be investable. So I think uh, to say that uh, putting all eggs in one basket is, uh, in this case, it's in this case, it's really this, this is a yes. really small basket. Small basket. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they need to be bigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Okay. So um, I got a few more. Um, which we gathered by discussing with some of your interested parties. Um, in the EGM circular, the figure presented to shareholders are based on financial year 2020, uh, audited financial results, and the first half of 2021 yeah. unaudited results. Right. Given that we already are in 2022, would it be more? Would it? Would it? Would it have? Would it have been more appropriate to let shareholders make their decision based on 2021 results, right? Instead of 2020. 
Uh, Would it have made any difference, you think? Let's put it this way. Yeah? Uh, what is disclosed in a circular is actually in compliance of what we have to disclose in terms compliance, of pro forma yeah. numbers. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we are not allowed to do projections, so to speak. And the 2021 audited results have not been released yet. yet yeah, yeah, right. We are just yeah. at this juncture. Soon. Could you have waited? Uh, so because I tell you why. The first read has had a volatile 24 months. Yes. And it, it restructured its master leases in January 2021. Right. Given that 80% of the consideration will be paid in units mm -hmm. of the first read, would it be reasonable for shareholders to review the 2021 uh, performance of first read first before being asked to vote and receive first read units as consideration? Mm. A fair question? Question. question. I think we have to look at this in a, uh, the context that yeah. uh, the difficult times of first read is probably over in terms of uh, the internal problems. Uh, so what is left that is probably a little unknown will be the COVID situation, mm. so to speak. Uh, but if you look into another perspective, be it first read, be it our Japan nursing home, uh, we are holding healthcare assets. Uh, yes. We are facing the same COVID situation. Uh, it's only difference in Indonesia or in Japan. Right, right. So I don't see a change in risk profile, so to speak, uh, because previously the so called tenant risk yes. has been addressed mm. by the master list restructuring. Mm. Yeah. More emphasis on assets outside Indonesia now. Yes, I, I think that is probably. Uh, first week, we'll be talking about it tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. yes, sorry. I keep coming back to first <laughs> <week>. <laughs> uh, Both JMF and JMA yes. considerations represent excesses over the book values of the JMF and JMA group, respectively. Yeah. Uh, in paragraph 3.3 of the letter to shareholders, page 12, it was stated that the proposed transaction will not result in any, in inverted commas, material. All right? net gain or net loss for the group upon right. completion. Can management help shareholders to reconcile the two statements? Um, I, I could not recall the, the specific paragraphs, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but I can talk a bit more about the substance of the transaction. Yeah. This transaction between us and uh, uh, First Street uh, upon our arms length negotiation, we each have our own uh, position to protect our shareholders and unit holders. From LH perspective, as what we have explained earlier, we do not want this transaction to impact on us in terms of our income and cash flow going forward. Ah, okay. At the same time, neither do we want to recognize any loss on disposal as well. So the whole context based on our priorities is that uh, the number of units issued, the price for the consideration, uh, the price of the units to be issued subject to valuation of the nursing home by colliers, you just got to meet the earlier criteria that I have said earlier. Sure. Yeah. So as I said, we don't expect any material gain loss one off from this transaction. Uh, we expect going on a recurring basis, income and distribution from First Street will be similar to the cash and the income that we recognize now from yeah. the nursing home. Yes, so I think we have reached the time limit, but just round up. Should the divest divestment proceed, which I think in all likelihood it will, uh, what are OUELS plans for the next 24 to 36 months? Can it be revealed? <laughs> you got any exciting uh, thoughts for the shareholders? Well, I think we are um, this uh, improving our balance sheet and uh, increasing our... Uh, 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 capital efficiency uh, are two uh, uh, involved tasks, I would say. Uh, it takes a lot of efforts, uh, you know, to put the company on the right track. And uh, so with this exercise, uh, going forward, we will uh, reduce our debt headroom and we'll be able to look at uh, better ways to finance our ongoing projects as well as new opportunities. New opportunities uh, come uh, as and when we have seen 
some of them in the last uh, three years. Uh, some of them uh, are good uh, operations, uh, but they have high asking prices. Mm. Some of them uh, are good opportunities, but they require long gestation. Like, they ask you to build another new hospital. Mm. So, uh, so I think uh, in that range, we have to uh, figure out something that suits our current profile. I think no, no uh, private sector group uh, can take on uh, a large number of uh, new projects, greenfield projects. Mm. Uh, you always almost have to have uh, ongoing profitable operations to finance one new project. So I think, I think that is the norm uh, in this industry. So uh, I think adding complexity to that will be uh, operating in different geographies so there is some complexity uh, to this model. But I think uh, with this exercise, uh, LH will be at the, at the, at the better position than uh, before you know, okay. for growth. That's very assuring. Shall we? Would you have to say anything more? No, no. Uh, I think on that assurance, assuring uh, note, we will finish the discussion tonight. And I wish you both gentlemen and the board and management the, the very best. Thank you very Thank much. You, David. Thank, Thank you, David. Thank you, Thank you, everyone.